Well, Congressman, thank you so much for taking time right before the, the big event. I, from what we gather, there's going to be uh, 3,000 to 4,000 uh, people here on the UT campus. Is those type of crowds, you had a big one in El Paso uh, the other day, is that what keeps you enthused, that keeps you going on this campaign? It, it sure does, because, you know, campaigning is tiring. Airplanes up and down, a lot of missed meals. I miss my bicycle ride. But the young people, because they're interested in ideas and the ideas that I've been talking about, and they're enthusiastic, that gives me a lot of energy because, you know, we talk about serious things like foreign policy and monetary policy and deficits. And I think the young people realize some of the problems they face as they become of age, looking for jobs and paying bills. So I find it very interesting and enthusiastic. Talk about some of the issues that they talk to you about and come up to you about. I, I saw there was a Gallup poll that I think from the 18 to 34 year olds, uh, you were like three percentage points within Mitt Romney in this key age group. Um, and you have so many issues that you're very passionate about, everything from legalizing marijuana to pulling troops out to getting rid of the Fed. Do they come with one specific issue in mind and then collectively they're there? Or do they hear about everything that you have to say and buy in? I talk to them a lot and ask them that question. And sometimes it'll be generalized. Wait, we like the fact that you emphasize the Constitution. That is appealing to them. They do like the idea that I would end the wars and only fight wars that are declared. They are fascinated with the subject of monetary policy and how that ties into deficit financing and how the monetary system works. But personal liberty is a big issue too. You know, I want people to assume responsibility for themselves and make, make their own decisions. So th this, this is what is very appealing to them. And they frequently will say, when I pin them down, I say, well, others say similar things. Yeah, but they say, you're telling us the truth. And that really pleases me because uh, I am telling the truth, but they seem to recognize the difference. You're pushing on with your message. I know just on Tuesday, Mitt Romney had the, the five right. wins. Um, he's got more than 800 delegates. You have about 80 delegates. Do you feel that there's a, a push still for uh, Tampa and the National Convention? Can you have a, a serious challenge? Probably not in the sense that we think that we can all of a sudden surge ahead and win it. but. Uh, the people who put this energy into it, and they're in a delegate process right now, and just this last week, there were some surprises. You know, it looks like we're going to probably win Iowa and Minnesota and Maine and Missouri. We're doing real well out in Washington. Uh, in Iowa, uh, we've elected the chairman of the party, and 15 out of the 17 uh, central committee members are Ron Paul supporters. So that's the kind of thing that's going on at the grassroots that nobody really measures, and I don't even know what's going on because I just hear about it as I travel around the country. So that to me is very encouraging too. There was an interesting article um, in Bloomberg uh, Business Week about this very topic that I think there's more than 65 supporters of yours that are running for various offices on various levels, local, state, on the federal level. Level. Is that part of this push then? As you talk yeah, about? and yet it's completely different because you hear the political parties, well, we have to recruit. Let's go out and recruit this one, and recruit this one. Both Republicans and Democratic leaders do that. But we don't recruit. I mean, we have people who we get excited, we get them reading, and they get uh, really enthusiastic about the message. And then they say, what should I do? And I say, well, do what you feel you want to do. Run for office, campaign for somebody, donate your money, become a teacher, become a TV personality, whatever. But do what you want to do. But you have a responsibility to do something. So a lot of them took it up and uh, ran for office. A lot of them have already won office uh, up in New Hampshire and these different places. They, there's a lot of new people at lower offices, anywhere from city council up. So I think this is a reflection that this is not just a, a short range uh, deal that we're doing. This, this is truly a philosophic revolutionary idea that we should change the status quo of Washington and they see that whether we have Republicans in charge or Democrats in charge, really nothing really ever changes and I think they see that we're talking about something different. So pushing ahead then to Tampa, are, is there concern that um, maybe this movement, this revolution if you will, could be at the expense of the uh, general election in November, whoever the nominee is, or not necessarily? I think
think there's probably some people are concerned about it, but we're concerned about the country not going, continue to go in the wrong direction. So the, the party is important, that's the vehicle we use, but it's secondary to, let's say that we are right, that we shouldn't fight wars without declaration, that we're in a war for 10 years and 70% of the American people want to come home. So the party becomes secondary to sending this message out. We're really talking to a broader population, and my numbers are very good outside the Republican primary because when my name is put up against uh, Obama's, you know, I can beat him at times and do as well as uh, Governor Romney. So this means that this message is uh, crossing over and uh, our goal is to change things and not just to go along to get along. This is your home state. Uh, uh, how do you hope that you uh, fare delegate-wise? Of course, it's not a winner-take-all state, but uh, what's the goal? What do you, what do you hope? Well, I, I don't have a precise number. We're going to pick up delegates, obviously, but uh, I don't think we're going to overwhelm the state uh, because there's still a lot of people, especially in the Republican primary, it's very challenging to talk about uh, you know, a change in foreign policy, and yet George W. Bush ran on a foreign policy similar to mine of a humble foreign policy, no nation building, no policing of the world, but I say it, I mean it, I think that's, that's what we should do, young people like that. So the message, if they could get that, if we could get that out, and the money's a big issue, we don't quite have the, the millions that you can raise on Wall Street, we don't get the Wall Street money, but we've raised a significant amount of money, but not quite enough to be uh, really competitive in the big states. Final couple of things I'll ask you. Beyond Tampa, I mean, out of the question of the third party run? I, I have no plans of doing that. That's very unlikely. I've never said absolutely never, 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 but I don't have any intention of doing that. It's a, that's, a, that's a tough job. So right now we're concentrating on getting our delegates, having a presence uh, in, uh, in, in Tampa, as well as encouraging more and more people to study and understand and get involved in trying to change the problems that we have in this country. And finally, what do you uh, hope happens uh, after this election? I mean, clearly you want to win this uh, race, but it's more uh, about just you personally. And right. I think that's the way you've perceived this uh, from the get-go, is that it's not about you, but about what these ideals are. What do you hope happens uh, beyond Tampa? Well, I think they're going to continue. And I think whether I do a lot or nothing, they're going to continue because the cat is out of the bag, so to speak. It's, it's going to happen. And it really happened four years ago. We, we uh, sort of ignited it four years ago, but then the economic crisis hit. And the kind of problems we talked about, the housing bubble and, and the debt bubble, and, and people know that we have a serious crisis going on. Same way with foreign policy. 70% of the people now say, enough is enough. Why are we over there? And now they know that Iraq had nothing to do with 9-11. The people are with us on this now. It's just sort of continuing that because you can't change everything in overnight. But we, the country is changing. It's a different country now than it was four years ago. And something has to be done because we cannot sustain it. We cannot keep running up these debts because it will bankrupt us and we'll face the same type of crisis that Europe is in right now. Well, Congressman Paul, we thank you for your time. I know you're planning to be in Tampa. We're going to be in Tampa. So I hope we can have another conversation. Wonderful. Be glad. Thank you so much.